Hello and welcome to lesson one of the Beginner Drawing Course 2. I'm Taylor Payton and in this lesson we're going to be covering some of the most fundamental things that you need to understand when you are beginning to learn to draw or if you've been drawing for a while, things that you may have missed out on that are really holding you back from expressing your full artistic caliber. So first and foremost, I just want to quickly talk about the outline of this course so that you can have sort of a basic idea of where we're going to be heading and how it's going to help you evolve through each lesson. So first and foremost, we're going to be talking about drawing basics, starting simple, developing your eyes and senses. I cannot stress enough how important that is to get your observational abilities finely tuned in the beginning and all throughout and moving forward even past the course. Your eyes and your senses are what are going to be your main tools when it comes to taking in information and creating art and fixing and changing and shifting that art about. Lesson two is going to be all about the fundamentals. These are the basis of drawing evolution. We'll talk more about those in a second as we get there. We will talk about some fundamentals in this lesson. And essentially the course is just built on fundamentals. So you're not going to get out of this one without learning a good deal of those really. So. Next is Quick Sketching 101, Laying Foundations Fast. The follow-up lesson to that is Drawing Development, Refining That Base Work. So being able to create something and get it out of your head or have a basis for going forward into the next uh, process of the drawing kind of act. Next we're going to get into Easy and Effective Perspective, creating that instant feeling of space. Finally switching over to Drawing from Life, going to the source and what it teaches. Lastly, we're going to end up at shading and values, working with light and the absence thereof, aka shadow. And the final lesson is creative drawing, using reference as a path to success. There will be a lot of stress on the imaginative aspect of drawing as we move through this course, but you're really going to want to focus on getting good at reference in the beginning because it's going to inform how you draw from your imagination later. So let's just kind of hop right into it. This is the primer. And in this primer, I really want to talk about the course and just how it's going to serve you and get some of the most basic elements down before we move forward. So this course is for you if you want to learn to draw with more certainty, technique, and soul. Certainty meaning having the ability to solve problems, feel sure of yourself in the process, and have confidence in your decision and mark making. That comes from knowing and learning a lot of techniques, techniques that I have grabbed from many master artists over the years and developed myself and things that I use in order to teach you from the beginning all the way up to a more intermediate level. Finally, soul is that hard to describe feeling that we get coming off the art that comes as a result of personal expression, personal growth, and telling that you put your heart and soul into it. Uh, it's okay to be a beginner no matter how long you've been drawing. It's okay. You don't need to get yourself all laden in shape or guilt or you know think about talent or any of that stuff just leave all that before you get into the course because it's just gonna hold you back in the long run and finally some of the big uh, words I'd like to talk about are connection concentration and conscientiousness uh, the connection is you connecting with your work and lessons in the moment in a moment-to-moment -moment basis concentrating on what's going on not sort of floating and meandering around bringing your attention back to center sort of like a meditative act and conscientiousness meaning sort of dutifully going through it and giving it uh, everything you have in those moments as you're working not thinking about too many other things and letting your mind drift and wander oftentimes we make a lot of mistakes and let a lot of things lapse and fall by the wayside if we are lacking in conscientiousness uh, it's a really important skill to cultivate in drawing and in life. Daily, disciplined, and determination. These words are really important because if you draw daily, you're going to have the most opportunity to improve uh, because just by proxy of the volume you'll be putting in. The discipline means having the ability to return every single day and to do the things you know you should do to make your drawings better. Lastly, we want to talk about being determined. So this means no matter how you're feeling in a given day, no matter how you want to sort of give up or quit or kind of feel sorry for yourself or something bad happened, you're determined to move forward. That means that you won't give up no matter what. That determination is what is going to set you apart from those who will fall to the wayside and have to pick up the slack later. If you're determined, then you take proper rest and proper breaks at intervals that are meaningful and you don't just kind of let things fall apart. It goes hand in hand with the conscientiousness piece. 
Next, we're going to talk about just a quick definition of drawing because I think that's really helpful to have the definition down in front of us so that we can have a really clear idea of what it is we're going to be doing uh, because there's no substitute for clarity, really. So drawing is a graphic representation by lines of an object or idea, as with a pencil, a delineation of form without reference to color. Color is complicated, you guys. I'm not going to get into color in this lesson or in any of the lessons in this course simply because this is all about drawing. Drawing is the foundation upon which color rests. Color will come later. Don't worry about it. As far as the representation, we're doing that with lines so that we can get these lines to read like the object or idea we're trying to express, such as these characters I've drawn on the left here. Now, I've included a lot of time-lapse videos, some with narration, some without narration, and you can feel free to access those uh, just as sort of accoutrement to the lessons that we're going to be kind of working through. Some of these don't have any specific um, purpose in the actual lesson plan. They're just really helpful to look at and study as somebody who is learning to draw better and kind of look how things come together. I will be doing demonstrations that are narrated and are more precise to kind of help drill some of these foundational concepts into your learning patterns. Next, uh, drawing can also be a sketch plan or design, especially made with a pencil, pen, or crayon. In our case, we're, we probably are using a drawing tablet of some sort. Before we get into the next module, I'm going to end this module by talking about mark making. So some of the tips I have for mark making are make marks that feel comfortable to you. So that means that you have to be paying attention to the way that they are looking and the way that your hand wants to move. In my case, this angle works really well. I'm left-handed, and this downward angle I, I can use no matter how I rotate the canvas, it'll still work for me. It's one of my most comfortable ways of making lines. Whereas if I try and move my line like this, you can see I'm starting to lose a little bit of quality, but it's not too bad. But I'm going from left to right. These are not really that straight, and they, they would have their purpose if I were to use them, but they don't have the same niceness or quality that I'm looking for. So likewise, if I go from right to left, I get a similar result. But if I go faster, then I can slowly start to temper the way that my marks come out. And a lot of what we're going to be doing in the beginning is making sure that we're getting used to making marks on the page with you know little straight lines, longer straight lines, and with some very basic shapes. So you want to make marks that feel comfortable. You want to be finding those angles. You want to add or decrease the pressure, meaning that if you're pressing down harder, things are going to come out more stark and more dark and bold. If you're pressing down lighter, they're going to be very soft and almost feathery in nature. Now I'm just using the default brush in Photoshop and I suggest that you don't get too creative or crazy with any of the brushes you're going to use. Pick one or two very well-rounded brushes or default brushes and stick with them. Don't go too far into trying to get texture and all these other things because it's just going to distract from the core principles of this lesson. Um, you really don't need to worry about making your lines perfectly straight. You can of course always hold shift or use some of the other line oriented tools in whatever art program you have in order to get straight lines later, so that's not really a big deal, but we'll talk about it. Uh, confidence does come from repetition and commitment. So everything is ultimately just marks on a 2D surface. And the way that you lay those marks in is going to create definition and dimensionality. So for example, if I start to kind of hatch out a shape here, you can see that I can kind of hatch along the surface and get an effect wherein you're starting to see form appear. Now, this is because I understand some of the principles of form, which we'll get into later, and I understand how the directionality and the type of mark and where my marks begin and end start to create this uh, very volumetric effect. Basically, this is all just a fancy way of saying that we're ultimately just working on a 2D surface and creating three-dimensional illusions based on how well we work with that 2D surface and the principles that I'm about to show you in this course that will allow you to have much more freedom of expression when it comes to working on this surface and making things look like they have real form and real definition on this surface. There are times where we want to make things flat and times where we want to make things very, um, you know, poppy and vibrant and, and volumetric. So we'll be learning how to do all of that as we move forward. It's just really a good idea 
to get used to creating basic shapes and basic marks, which is actually what your assignment is going to be about. So now that we've sort of played around a little bit and I've showed you some of these basics and given you some primers, let's move into the next module where we can start to talk about more uh, foundational basics that are going to really help you get off to a strong start when it comes to amplifying your drawing abilities. All right, welcome back to the second module of the first week's lesson. We're going to be going over just really quickly some of the tools that I can personally back or recommend just in case you haven't gotten to that point yet. But these are really important to have in a beginner drawing course lesson especially. Just which one of these things is going to be the most suitable for you. Uh, basically you can go with either a Wacom or a Huey and Tablet, just the lowest end model as far as price goes and use something free like GIMP or Krita when it comes to software. However, Procreate is very affordable if you do have the budget for an iPad or an Apple Pencil. You'll need both of those as well uh, if you're going to be using Procreate. Clip Studio Paint is also a software I can recommend. It is a one-time fee unlike Photoshop, which is a monthly subscription model. Basically, if you're going to be going traditional, pencils, mechanical pencils, an eraser, and a needable eraser are all you're going to need next to some sketchbook paper or other paper you feel comfortable drawing on as a surface. But no matter what tool you're using, we're going to be making marks and erasing them, basically, and then flipping or zooming out or changing our perception somehow to check our drawing and our work just as we're progressing through that process. Digital obviously offers greater freedom to change things, but traditional will give you more fidelity, meaning that the... Um, physical real world connection is just a lot more um, resolute. You have a lot more of an ability to control it rather than gliding across a tablet screen. All right, next, let's talk about developing your senses. So this is so crucial. I am going to hammer this throughout the course into every single lesson that, and demonstration that I possibly can because it is the most important thing that you can do at the beginning of your artistic journey or wherever you are at. Basically when it comes to developing your senses, you want to develop your sight, your feeling, and your bodily awareness. Now what do I mean by those things? Basically your sight is what you're seeing, how to interpret and parse it, paying deep attention to the visual pieces of any given thing. So when it comes to paying deep attention to something, I've included some images on the right here that we're going to break down in a second. But first, let's talk a little bit about feeling and the kind of definitions therein. So feeling is the emotions, vibes, and or depth of connection you have to a certain image. If you look at all of these images, these four that I've included on this lesson slide, you'll have different feelings and connections arise to them as you pay more attention to them. Now you may not get this feeling instantaneously, or you may not have strong feelings instantaneously, or you may lack a lot of feeling altogether just based on the image. The core is to be paying attention to what kind of emotions or vibrations or connection you get to the image. For example, if I look at this cave image and I start to ruminate on it and hold my attention on it, I start to get feelings. I start to have sensations of, okay, well, maybe there is an adventure to be had. You think about light at the end of tunnels. You think about, oh, this gorgeous, vibrant sort of grass. And even if I change everything to grayscale, you can see that the grass holds a lot of that light. And we'll be doing a lot of grayscaling later, talking more about that. But the feelings are things that arise from looking at an image. And this one, since it's a figure, it might be a little easier for some people to ascertain that feeling. So obviously this person, or this statue rather, is very exhausted or very lachrymose, just kind of so tired that it won't even hold up its own head. And then that line of action, which we'll talk more about in the, uh, in the third lesson of this course, it's very slanted throughout the entire body. And the feeling you get is just sort of this one of, is it a lot of woe? I don't necessarily sense a lot of woe here. There could be a depressive element, but to me it's just sort of a tiredness. It's sort of a, a heft and a heaviness. Even though you have this white, beautiful marble that sort of contrasts that, and that's one of the more visual elements. So we're mixing the visuals and the feelings in order to get a better semblance of what it is we're looking at. And when you get better and better at mixing the things that you're seeing and parsing, Things we will talk about nearly ad infinitum in the course, and when you mix that with the emotions you're getting from particular 
uh, imagery and thoughts and feelings and ideas as well, then we're going to create stronger art because we're going to use those things as our parameters, as our internal speedometers, these guides that will allow us to not only understand what we're seeing and break it down, but understand the feelings inside and the thoughts running through our mind, break those down as well, and then use all of those pieces to create something of our own. So just real quickly in terms of feeling, looking at this right here, we have the feeling of cold paint on skin. We have the feeling of, oh, we are you know painting on another person and there's an interesting sort of crop and visual. So all of this together just creates um, sort of a an intriguing emotion like why would you paint on somebody uh, what is this trying to say you know is there something in regard to um, race or whatever just because there's different um, skin colors in here so it's sort of confusing and odd and almost a little uncomfortable to me but the the key is to pay attention to things like that no matter what the feeling you're getting is or the feeling you're trying to convey is um, lastly, this is the eye, so we have a lot of depth and connection to this. This has sort of a twofold meaning in that we're talking not only about how to see but how to feel and you know the eyes are the window to the soul, all of that. You can see that based on this image, the focus is right here because we have all of this detail and sharp crisp clarity and then things start to fall off with the depth of field and get softer and blurrier. So it's really just a great image for talking about how to parse things, how to focus, and how to get into a state where you're able to feel out both of the uh, emotions, the vibes, the connections, and the sights, and the, the things that you're actually um, paying attention to visually. Lastly, basically, I just want you to start coming online in these regards. So really paying attention to your feelings and the sight. You'll get feelings from your own art that tells you when things are off. You'll see things that sort of bother your eye. Um, if you think you're already really aware of stuff like this, like, oh, I know how to break stuff down visually and I know how to have strong or pay attention to my strong or weak or whatever feelings arising in me when I'm making art, it's going to be more information you can work with as an artist, as somebody who is creating, as somebody who is paying a lot of attention and being very discerning in that regard. To further elaborate on some of the things that I was just talking about, as far as more actionable things go when it comes to sight and feeling, you want to be able to squint to compress values and simplify what you're seeing. So compressing the values just means it really pushes the contrast and allows you to see it better. So if you quickly squint at this image over here, you'll note that everything in the shadow sort of falls away. You just see these sharp triangular shapes uh, that are dark, these sharp triangular shapes that are light. And then you have all of this sort of uh, light gray in the uh, bottom of the image here. And you see the lines, the strong shadow lines of the steps and all of the visual noise that the birds create. So that's squinting. You don't want to do that too much because you might upset your eyes and that, you know, it does not bode well for an artist. I would squint probably every five minutes or so just when you're working to check the values. Um, you have rotation to check the shapes, the composition integrity, and the proportions. So obviously you can digitally rotate your canvas. I like to hold shift so that it gives me the uh, snapping rotation, meaning that it is snapping to various angles. So you can see it goes from uh, 90 to 75 there. And really good shapes, really powerful drawings and shapes will have a lot of integrity no matter what angle you view them from. So rotating and checking your drawing from time to time will help you see it in a different way, uh, just to make sure that it has integrity and the proportions are working. Flipping the canvas for the same images and purpose. I'm not gonna flip the canvas, but I will flip this drawing that I've done right here. So I'm gonna go to edit, flip horizontal. And that allows me to see it differently to make sure that the proportions are good and working for me. And in the case of this drawing, actually, um, I'm not totally displeased with it. It's, it's a rather decent drawing, but if I could go back and rework this, I would actually bring this up a little bit just because it seems a little low and I want more space between the mouth and the jaw. So that actually makes me feel way better looking at this drawing, just that one simple change right there. You see there's not really enough space between the jaw and the mouth for how strong and masculine the features are. And as I amplify that, I sort of create a better proportion ratio. We'll talk about proportions more so in uh, future lessons, but for right now, I just really wanted to showcase how that can be useful, flipping the canvas, seeing things anew. Next would be grayscale images to remove the color considerations.
considerations and focus on tone. So this image is already grayscale, but if I go ahead and grayscale uh, these different masterworks here from various artists of yore, you can see that each of them has a specific value pattern, a specific series of like blacks, whites, and or grays and use those to understand the image even better because all this color you you're not able to see in your mind's eye very easily the grayscale things that are going on the things that are going on in the value structure but as artists it's really important to understand what the value structures are so that we can build our images with strong value structures and again we're going to have a full you know couple lessons on values um, there's some strong value fundamental principles in lesson six and lesson seven is all about values so don't worry too much about that for now it's just a way to see things that again allows you to parse information and elaborate your ability to see next we have measuring the dimensions or size of one part of the drawing to other parts which is proportion so again i talked a little bit about that with this drawing uh, for example if you look at the size of this um, middle pillar here next to how small each of the little birds is, you get a really good idea of scale, a really good idea of proportion. You could look at the size of an eye next to, you know, the size of the nose, and let's say how many eye, eye lengths the nose is long. You'd say, okay, you just say, okay, well, there's one, probably two, three, and maybe four. So we can test that really quickly. Just grab an eye, duplicate it, bring it down right here. Make sure on the right layer. So bring that eye down, duplicate it again, bring it down, <laughs> and we're totally making a surreal Van Gogh for this lesson, but I'm, I'm here for it. Um, not like he wasn't fairly surreal in how he worked anyway. So yeah, it's about four eye lengths. There, yeah, eye lengths from um, this proportion. And that's just one way to measure items against other items in the picture plane, or rather uh, different pieces of the picture plane against one another. It's four eye lengths down finishes the nose and then we probably have two eye lengths down to get to the mouth and the mouth and the eye lengths look like they're about comparable. So it would be one eye is pretty much the size of the mouth um, vertically speaking. So we use a lot of horizontal and vertical lines when measuring just like in a grid. We'll get more into that later for proportional purposes uh, but that's pretty much a little quick rundown of proportion. Next we'll talk about accessing higher levels of detail perception. This means that when you look at something, for example this drawing, you can see that there are varying levels of details. The hair has quite a bit of marks and details in it, whereas the skin has relatively few. Or in this image right here, you can see when I've zoomed in, from far out you really can't see much of the texture or grain in any of the pillars or any of the compositional elements or any of the patterns on the birds, but as you zoom in, you note that, wow, you can really see all of the different stonework. You can see the grain and the texture of these gigantic pillars, how it contrasts with the grain of, say, the building. And in the foremost pillar, you can see even larger sizes of grain. So essentially what we're doing is we're amplifying our ability to see detail and selecting when we want to see a lot of detail or we want to simplify things greatly just so we can draw them. And again, more on that later. Uh, lastly for sight is knowing when a shape or mark is bothering your eye and really this sensation is applicable to feeling as well because you'll get a bothered feeling in both your eyes as well as your sort of chest and throat area and this for me used to be something that I was so confused about but after going through a mentorship I started to understand how oh well these feelings don't mean that there's something wrong with me it just means that there's something wrong with the art so let's say I have just a really simple shape right here, for example, and you see that all these marks are relatively decent, and then, you know, maybe a little shadow is beginning to form here, but then you see this one, and it just sort of cuts in. It falls outside of the uh, contour line here, and it's just not really vibing with the rest of them. Likewise, I can do even worse, and just sort of shoot a shape randomly, or a, a line randomly across this otherwise soft surface, and call a lot of attention and contrast to it. And this is sort of a really soft example of it. Um, there's lots of ways to make very ugly marks that just don't really sit that well on the eye. And yet you can make very comfortable, very worthwhile marks that really tend to fall in line, no pun intended, 
with the surface or with the drawing in general. Um, there's lots of different ways to know when something is bothering your eye, especially if there's like getting distortions in like a cup. For example, if I draw a cup really quickly, there's going to be some distortions because I was very quick in, in drawing it. And I can just see that the perspective is way off on this ellipse. This doesn't look dimensional. And some people, like especially beginners, would just leave it here. Whereas if you take the time to iron out more of those distortions, then your eye is bothered less, your chest is bothered less, and when you look at the drawing, your soul can rest. So this is just a really brief kind of introduction into making sure that your eyes remain unbothered by the marks you're making and that you can be advancing by putting things next to each other that feel accurate and feel worthwhile, that they're actually lining up and having a more cohesive effect. Now, even this one is fairly imperfect, obviously, but it is leagues better than the first one. And I'm not gonna bother getting too detailed with it right now as badly as I wanna draw. I am teaching right now. There will be time for demonstrations. I just have to keep telling myself that. So anyway, <laughs> um, let's get into the feeling portion really quickly. So basically, Noting the emotions or lack thereof arise, and we've already kind of talked about that, where you might look at these four images and get a sensation or feeling from each of them. So this one has sort of a more tribal or cultural sort of feeling, and you can see the features are very rudimentary but very interesting, very um, expressive in how these uh, various sort of curved lines are coming together and you can get this sort of vibrancy from the orange as well, kind of popping this darker statue off of the background and allowing us to see a lot of form and dimension in these you know, simplified and stylized shapes. Whereas you see something like this and you also get sort of an interesting feeling like it looks sort of fierce. It looks like it's got sharp teeth and uh, you can kind of feel out the, the rough hewnness of the clay that was uh, put in the kiln and you, you get a sense that it's very old as well because of the the wear that's happening around the eye and some of these other areas where the paint is sorting are starting to kind of uh, fade or come off over time and you might look at this and feel sort of a soft welcoming kind of presence like sort of a, a motherly presence or just the female energy and this energy is what you want to be aware of when you're making your art because you might want to imbue your art with these different types of energies and we'll get into that later it has to do with shapes values all the principles I'm going to teach you but your chest is the emotional gauge for that so that's paying attention to those senses you're getting while you're taking the image visually um, that sense might be intratactile, meaning like a feeling you get inside about how something would actually feel the touch. You know, like if you ran your hand across this or this, they would have different textures. Um, you know, same way as you're not going to go to the museum and actually run your fingers across the painting, but you get the sensation in your hand, um, oh, in, in your body and in your mind of what it would be like to actually touch it. And that's an important sensation that you should tap into while you're working because then you'll know if your textures or your feeling is getting closer to what you want or further away from it. Um, you can also give things like different emotions, you know, nostalgic, angry, sad, sweet, cute, epic, all of that. And those are feelings too. Um, you have to be in touch with like, does this feel, you know, epic? Does it feel cool? Does it feel cute? Um, like, does this make you feel happy when you look at this? Not necessarily. Uh, it's very trippy, you know, he's got a very blank expression on his face. And it might make you feel a tiny bit nostalgic. It doesn't really have an angry feeling to it, but maybe when you look at some of these darker lines where he's shading the face, you might get an angry feeling from that. Or, um, you know, some of these darker, blacker lines, I kind of get a, a little bit more of an angry feeling from those. So what it just means to attune your senses more so. And these senses are very subjective uh, to each and every person, but we all have different senses and that's what I'm trying to get you to realize and acknowledge at this point is just how you can become more and more aware of those senses and use them to imbue your art with uh, the feelings therein whether they be feelings of sadness or anger or um, you know actually tactile type senses like you want something to feel like fur or like stone so that is something to keep in mind moving forward as well Okay, now that we've talked about all those things in terms of feeling and sense and sight and getting in tune with all of those things, let's start to actually do a little drawing, huh? So in this 
demonstration, I'm basically just going to be creating a whole bunch of different shapes and lines and marks and getting used to drawing as it were and getting used to the feeling of what it's like to draw and what it's like to be conscious while drawing and not just drawing on autopilot or allowing older uh, habits of drawing that I may or may not have cultivated to run unchecked. So this at first takes a lot of concentration and a lot of focus to be able to consistently come in and be aware of what's going on at every single part of the drawing and during the drawing process and not leaving things that aren't lining up or aren't feeling right. Like obviously this line shoots way off and distorts the shape that I'm trying to create. So if I command Z or control Z that I have a better shot of making a shape that feels more cohesive. And I do that by lining up all of my lines. So we'll be talking a lot in lesson two about various types of shapes and how they play into the drawing process. But for this demonstration, I'm just going in and creating them and showing you that you just want to be doing various marks and shapes like cubes and lines hatching in varying directions. You want to do some curved lines and just kind of feel out what it's like to curve those lines together. Um, if you start getting results that feel like they're not lining up or like you don't like them, that's fine. Just be aware of that. This, this is a very open and free assignment to start with because I just want you to get used to being aware of your body aware of the way your hand is moving when you make these shapes or when you kind of doodle about and to get a sense of freedom and non-judgment but simultaneously awareness. So you're not gonna start off and just draw the most gorgeous, epic, beautiful piece of art because it's really just about getting these basic things down, being able to make marks, being able to curve those marks along surfaces or continue them, being able to uh, do some straighter marks and line them all up in ways that feel, you know, maybe very close and compact or let them get further apart and make them have a different feeling altogether. You know, maybe we're starting stairs, maybe we're adding texture or stripes to something. And then when it comes to shapes, you can practice your circles, your spheres, you can practice your cones. And you can see it's not easy necessarily to do a cone or a sphere without some distortion. And when I refer to distortions, I just mean that it's not a perfect shape. It's not perfectly in perspective, which we're going to solve that problem later in lesson five when we dig deeper into perspective. But it's still really helpful to be able to draw not only the shapes, but be able to draw on the surface of the shapes and give them various marks that will describe that form. And by describe that form, what I mean is that as I make these marks along the surface, I'm envisioning how the dimensionality would be showcased of this sphere, how I'm going to make marks that are in alignment with that dimensionality. And I'm also going to be doing things like creating darker marks. You know, on the outside, it often looks good to have marks that are more stark in contrast to the marks inside. And that's just something that you learn by paying close attention to the marks that you're making. Um, essentially, it's okay just to make a whole bunch of different shapes and a whole bunch of different marks and lines and get used to that process because you're going to be doing it for your characters and your costumes and your creatures and your machines. It's all uh, kind of drilled down into marks and shapes in proportion to one another and lines that have certain textures or qualities to them. Obviously, we could get into things like uh, the way that color plays into that or the way that, um, you know, ma major composition or some of these things play into it. And we'll touch on some compositional ideas certainly in this course and get you up to speed in terms of uh, some very basic compositional elements, but we won't actually be diving deep into like very specific things like illustration or concept art. I'm giving you the building blocks for those things at this point. The ability to draw and make marks and understand shapes and train your perceptions so that 
everything else falls into place easier for you when you do want to find a specialty later if that is your decision or if you just want to draw without ascribing yourself to any given category of art be it concept art illustration um, fine art what have you just get into the modality of creating and having a very um, having a very conscious way of doing that so as you can see I'm just going around making a lot of shapes and a lot of marks and sort of enclosing them feeling out their dimensionality sometimes I'll draw through them and other times I'll just leave them sort of as they are uh, I try to infer dimensionality with almost everything that I draw simply because it is a good habit to get into uh, especially when you're a beginner a lot of things I see feel very flat and they feel like areas of them are flattening out and that's because you, the beginner typically doesn't pay as much credence to the practice of drawing volumetric primitives meaning that these are primitive shapes or free form uh, shapes that have a volume to them now it's fine to draw things flat especially when you want patterns or textures that are like laid on a wall or a piece of clothing for example like I can make this surface plane and subdivide it by four and I can sketch circles into each of these and then I can go ahead and continue to subdivide those circles in interesting ways to get sort of a pattern and these are obviously very irregular like if I was actually going in and finishing this up as a drawing I would be much more um, slow and conscientious I'm being very sketchy and quick right now which is you know the point of the exercise so um, basically it's all just about getting in and getting comfortable making types of marks whatever they may be and then envisioning what those marks or shapes could be used for so um, this could be a sort of crinkled and interesting um, type of architecture or it could be um, you know part of an accordion I'm, I'm just trying to create some dimensionality here very quickly and this is probably the the roughest and ugliest shape on the page if I were to get really picky and squint my eyes at it um, just because a lot of these lines aren't lining up they're a little bit sort of um, uh, I guess pickety is the way I would describe them um, I, I'm again going rather quickly but I'm just trying to demonstrate these various um, principles in in terms of mark making and in terms of shape design so uh, this is the first demonstration just for those purposes and you can get into some more soft shapes that you can kind of draw on the surface of just sort of circles spherical type shapes and then we can draw on the form we'll learn much more about the forms later you could make these lines as dense as you want or as light as you want. For example, if I um, draw a cube up in this corner, then I can shade the surface of it like so. And I can have some very dense shading. I can be very focused on drawing these vertical lines across the surface of this plane of the cube, this face of the cube. And then maybe on top they're not quite so close together and they're not quite so heavy but you can see that some of the marks are sort of you know running past the contour and breaking the illusion of form a little bit and maybe the uh, lightest side of the cube has very few marks at all in terms of how it runs across the form and again there's no shame in cleaning up a little bit with the eraser um, another thing that you can kind of watch or, or get a sensation of is this touching the corner of the canvas that to me feels uncomfortable it just feels like there's no real purpose to it it just feels a little cramped and cloistered so I'm just going to scale that down a little bit and automatically that feels like there's more space around it it feels like it can breathe and we'll talk about negative space more so throughout the course and how negative space is something to be very aware of in terms of our sight perceptions down the line uh, there's so many things that you're going to learn to look for and learn to perceive that i'm very excited for you because as you embark on this drawing journey you're going to find that your perceptions uh, both visually emotionally and otherwise just begin to shift into that 
of an artist into more of an artist. And an artist is a, a sensitive individual in a lot of um, in a lot of ways because your senses are what permit you to access these feelings and these levels of beauty or these levels of um, you know ugliness if that's what you're trying to perceive or convey or create. We can make things very beautiful, we can make things very sweet or epic or ugly, but we have to be able to detect those things first and foremost. And this isn't really an exercise in detecting those things necessarily uh, when it comes to drawing a bunch of shapes and subdividing them on the um, picture plane, but it is about understanding how to make a, a lot of different types of marks and how to line those marks up together how to play with line, how to play with curved lines, thick lines, thin lines, heavy lines, and qualities of line, and examine and become aware of those qualities of line. Because you're going to want to have as many lines and shapes, quote unquote, in your visual library and in your artistic tool belt, because when you're looking at reference or when you're working on characters or whatever the case may be, you're going to be able to uh, have a, a greater range of selection, more paints on your palette, uh, more notes in your scale to be able to express, okay, well, how does this leg look? How, what types of lines would I use here? Um, you know, lost and found or this type of curve, or maybe it's a very strong leg and I need to uh, have a lot of shading and hatching to bring out the muscle definition. So these are decisions that you can make and calls that you can make based on what you're seeing, based on the feelings you want to achieve, all of that. So as you can see, we're starting to fill up the page here uh, just with our different marks and shapes that I've generated. And it's something that I feel is important for every beginner. It's great for a warm up. It's great uh, as an assignment. And that's what we're going to be getting into in the next module. I'm going to be handing you your assignment so that you can do similar things and begin your very, um, your very basic artistic expression when it comes to these shapes and lines and marks that you're going to be making. And it's so freeing, it's so beautiful, and I just want you to have patience uh, with yourself, with the, the outline of the course, because it's only eight weeks long at the very um, basis. Uh, I plan to include up to 16 lessons, so by the time you are watching and going through this course, there may be 16 lessons already. But just have patience when it comes to working your way through this curriculum and your artistic development because you'll suffer needlessly if you don't. And you may create enough negative, um, enough negative feedback or thoughts in your head to convince yourself to quit or to do something else when in fact that there's so much to be gained and so much to be learned and won and expressed if you can simply just continue this journey and have patience with yourself as you're learning these things. and um, let them start to unfold before you and then kind of look back and realize that oh I, I perceive this so much greater or I can create at this level now because I allowed myself to become sensitive to these things and to train my awareness um, sort of like a, a hunter would train themselves to uh, capture their prey you know look for the footprints uh, find the different things in the forest like a broken branch or some disturbed leaves or catch a scent of something. All of these things are leading you to um, a greater degree of acumen when it comes to your craft. So now that I've more or less filled the page and talked about the reasons why you would want to do exercises like this, uh, let's just get into the more specific portion of your assignment um, and then we'll kind of go from there. So these are the guidelines. Each week's exercises or assignments are done daily uh, for a minimum of an hour and a maximum of six. You can obviously do what you want in general, but these are my recommendations. The ideal is two to four hours. Uh, this is just kind of a sweet spot. Uh, six for eight weeks, you might risk some burnout. One hour, you will get probably the bare minimum of what you are able to get from this course. So uh, take a five minute break every 25 minutes just so you don't hurt your wrist. And after every hour, take a 15 minute break again so you don't harm your actual physiology while working on this course. So now that we have gotten there, our first assignment is to sketch basic forms and shapes such as cylinders, cubes, circles, spheres, and cones. Uh, you want to practice your mark making by hashing out various lines in different directions with different weights as well. 
as you're doing this, I want you to analyze the quality of those lines and shapes. Uh, what do you like about them? Uh, how do you want to improve them? Imagine how they're going to apply to the drawing process. You can move on from this assignment or this lesson once you've filled up five sketchbook pages or five digital drawing documents with those shapes and lines. So challenge mode for this one is after you have completed the initial assignment, construct some characters, creatures, and objects with the shapes and marks you've enjoyed the most. Uh, detach from the results at this point, it's really fine to just focus on process and enjoyment because you're already going above and beyond. So two more pages uh, slash documents or more of this is recommended. So that is your assignment one, just like you saw in the demonstration. Um, go, go ham with this one, you know, get freed up and have a good time and really pay attention, stay conscientious, draw some good shapes and some good lines and some bogus shapes and lines and kind of feel out the difference, start to develop that artistic sense because we will be sharpening it as we move forward through the course. All right, happy drawing.